Uh, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, I know Pastor L. Page does as well. Uh, one thing that I always say is when it comes to the word support, support to me is not just coming and saying you support. Because there's a lot of people that come to spy out your liberty, like Paul says in the word, right? But, but understand, to support is to understand God's message. That's support to me, right? And I appreciate every one of you for coming to, to labor with us in the doctrine. Because that's, that's, that's what it's all about. So I really do appreciate that. And I know uh, Pastor L. Page does as well. And, uh, you know, we've been getting messages. Uh, we just had a person text us the other day, a guy out of uh, Dallas, uh, James, uh, out of Dallas, Texas. And uh, he texted us, uh, he texted me, but he was telling that he really, he left the Potter's house, T.D. Jake's church, and he now goes to church at home watching the videos. And so he's coming to the, yeah, he's coming to, uh, he's coming to the knowledge of the truth, and he said he really appreciates me and Pastor Elphage for the labor that we put in, and he said also to thank our wives for giving us the opportunity to release us. Text Pastor L. Page, and I was telling my wife, I said, "That's you know, for him to say that, that 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 really that brought me to another level of thinking because our wives have to allow us to not only be their wives but be pastors to all of you. So 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 I, I do dearly thank God for my wife and also for uh, Pastor L. Page, wife Sister Charlotte. We thank God for you all. And uh, but but we're, I'm very appreciative, and you guys know me. I'm not a big you know, praise God. I, I'd rather you come and listen to the message and be blessed. Because Paul Amen. says, if I do this thing unwillingly, unwillingly, then I have a reward. But his reward is that people's fruit may abound to your account. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Now, so that, that, that support that you have, that when you ask questions, because you know I love to answer questions. So when you, because all I, I just want to teach, right? Amen. So when you, when you, you support me by not only coming, but by trying to understand mm -hmm. the word of God. Because that's God's will for you. It's not that's about right. me. That's God's will for you, right? So, but but we do thank you for, for everything that you guys do for us. We do thank because we couldn't have done it. It's a ministry. We couldn't have done it without you, right? So we thank you all for for that once again. Um, uh, thank God for us. Uh, my mother. Uh, also, she was sick, and also uh, Shannon. I saw her. Yeah, she's back there. She's feeling better. Uh, and just uh, thank God for all of you. Anybody who was sick and those things, uh, we've been praying. Uh, and, and laboring for you as well. But we, we thank God. Uh, yes, Makila asked me to pray for her uh, yesterday. She's going to be starting a new endeavor this week, and she needs our prayer, so we definitely want to pray for her. Uh, but uh, but uh, once again, we're very appreciative, and we, 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 we appreciate that, and, uh, and understand that we thank you all as well, because we, we, without you, without you, there can, uh, uh, we're just going to be standing up here talking to nobody, Amen. all right? And so we thank God for all the visitors also online, online mm -hmm. uh, who watch the services Amen. and do all those things and support us and uh, send us things through the, through the email and the internet. We thank you all for that. And also for our visitor today, we, we thank you so much for being here. Uh, I, 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 I hope that you've been blessed through uh, the word of God and that you'll come back to be with us. Amen. No, thank you so much. Uh, I, I just want to talk briefly here about, go, go turn with me to 2 Corinthians 3. I want to talk briefly about this, the Halloween that's coming up. Uh, because, you know, as, you know, quote unquote Christians, we have a understanding about Halloween that, uh, really has nothing to do with anything but so I'm not going to get too deep into the holiday and the origins of it and all of that uh, but I, I, I just want to instruct you on a couple of things 2 Corinthians 3 and we'll, we'll, verse 17 is the verse we'll be, we'll, we'll be using yeah. but uh, now when it comes to Halloween it's not the devil's birthday it's not the, you know, say it, 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 first of all, it has nothing to do with the Bible at all. It's man-made, right? Some man, somebody thought something up to be satanic. Now, there probably are more satanic things going on that day than normal, 
but it has nothing. That's just the wickedness of man's heart. It has nothing to do with a with a a the devil's birthday. If you go get candy, you're worshiping the devil and all this crazy stuff. I heard at, 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 you know growing up in religion. It, it has nothing to do with that, right? Now, would I encourage you to go dress up as witches and practice witchcraft and do? I'm not. That, I don't do that, right? I'm, and, and you shouldn't. Let me see. You shouldn't do that, right? If you want to go and get candy with your children, there's, there's, no, there's nothing sinful about that. There's, God is not condemning anybody for that. You have the freedom and liberty in Christ to go do that. I would say, be, you know, with the things that are going on today, be cautious about the candy. People may put stuff in the candy and those types of things. Be careful of the neighborhood you go in, you know, those types of things. But understand... We have liberty in Christ. Amen. We're not bound to, you know, because man wants to put something satanic on something. We're not bound to not allow our kids to enjoy just going to get candy and eating the candy and fellowship right. with other friends. Right? Right? Because, and that's, that's kind of what I want to talk to you today about, just the liberty that we have in Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, is there a difference, I think I've asked this before, is there a difference between liberty and freedom? Is there a difference between liberty and freedom? Yeah, big difference. Anybody? Big difference, Thank huge. So. Give me some of your thoughts. Nobody's right or wrong. I just want to hear some thoughts. Uh, I thought liberty and freedom were synonymous. In my opinion, I did. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, uh, the liberty... Um, like our, our liberty from sin, I thought we we're free from the punishment of sin, or free from the consequences of sin. But I guess sin is still sin. So I don't know. They might be different in that aspect. <laughs> you, that that that's good because you just made me think about something that I'm gonna explain. With yeah, that. that's good. You just made me think about something. I think uh, it, there is a difference. Uh, liberty, I would think, would be more associated with Christ, with the gospel, uh -huh. and. Um, was described in the Constitution of the United States. Uh -huh. got, yeah. Uh -huh. We think of freedom, but we think God really for the liberty uh -huh. has set us free from uh -huh. sin. Good, good. And uh, anybody else? I think that kind of did it. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, and let me give this natural example to kind of, uh, because what both of you said was correct. And uh, the, de the explanation that you gave was, was perfect. To take it a step further, if I've been in jail for 20 years and I get out of jail, am I free or am I liberated? Free. 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 You're free. free. No more bondage. No more, you're, you're free in the sense that there's no more bondage. But mentally, are you free? No. no. So you're not liberated in your thinking because every, everything you do is based on what you've done for the last 20 years. See, if I've talked to a couple of guys who've been in prison for that long, mm -hmm. and their mindset at first is, I'm free, but really, it's better for me to go back in there. Mm -hmm. Why? Because their mind has been institutionalized, and they're, even though they're free physically, they're not liberated. Mm -hmm. okay. You see that? Now, what you said when it comes to sin, we are free from the punishment of sin. But God's will is not that we just be saved, but that we what? Come into the knowledge of the truth. So after initial justification, which is payment of our uh, the pay, freedom from the punishment of sin, now we have sanctification, which is which is liberation from the power of sin. You see that? See, just because you're saved and you don't study the Bible, you're not going to have any power. To, be, to, to reckon sin dead unto you as Christ said it is. Right, right, right. right? See, if you don't sanctify yourself or set yourself apart based on the knowledge of studying God's word, mm -hmm. you're still going to be controlled and be servants of sin. But you'll still be saved. Because you've been, once you're saved, you have freedom from the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin is what? Yeah. Death. death. Eternal death. You are, you're free from that. But to understand who you are in Christ, like she said, that's liberation, right? right? Yeah, because now my sanctification, my practical walk every day is based on Christ that lives in me. So now I'm free and also liberated. Amen. 
another thing, Pastor, just like the law and grace, you you save by grace through faith, and you take on that belief, and now you are saved, mm -hmm. but you try to live your life under the law, so now you're still under the power of sin. There you go. Mm -hmm. Because sin, but, <laughs> sin, the law is the what? Knowledge, Knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. So even after you're saved, there's members in the body of Christ that don't live according to this doctrine. They live according to the law, and they continually put themselves in, bound, in bondage. I refuse to live in bondage again. Amen. Right? Amen. Religious, they're on, a, they're on a religious treadmill. That's the message that preached that Sister uh, L. Page had given me. Right? Now, the, uh, the, uh, the, the religious Amen. treadmill, right? When you're not liberated in your thinking, you're going somewhere, but you're going nowhere fast. You're moving, but you're going nowhere fast. Wow. Right? You, 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 can, you, go, you can go all over the world you want. You can go read all kind of commentaries and books that you want. But until you understand your position in Christ, you will not be liberated in your thinking. Jesus. Look at 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is what? That, that is. spirit. Understand that. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? So that means because the spirit of the Lord lies where? In us, and it dwells in us. That means that if I want to go trick or treat and go get candy, yes. since that the Lord is that spirit, wherever His spirit is, there's what. Liberty. So I'm able to go do that. Right. You see that? There's no satanic policy. That the the, the the day is for satanic people to come out and do the satanic policy of evil, right? Do all this other stuff, but you don't have to participate in that, right? See, I, we're, we're, our job, Paul says, uh, uh, be not unequally yoked. How can light have anything to do with darkness? But understand, we're still in this world. We're just not of it. See, see how in the world, as a matter of fact, the, 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 uh, hopefully somebody comes to my door, because not only am I going to give candy, but I'm going to give them the brochure of how to be saved. Amen. You see that? See, you use the liberty that you have in Christ to fulfill the will of God. Right. See, it's not about the holiday. Man, that's a man-made holiday. It has nothing to do with God or Satan having a birthday. Or it has nothing to do with that. So because of the liberty that you have, you do the, what, you, what you're required to do. So, so they're saying they're using this as a uh, Satan's holiday or whatever. However they yeah, it's supposed to be the devil's so, birthday. And what about all the other days that people don't commit all this crime? There you go. Amen. 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 Yeah. Romans 14, Paul says, one man is statement one day above another. Mm -hmm. But let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Oh, my. See, Paul also said in 1 Corinthians uh, 1 and 24, he says, for I do not have dominion over your faith, but I'm just a helper of your joy. Mm -hmm. Who am I to tell you, don't go out there and do no trick-or-treat and Halloween stuff? Well, I'm trying to control you. Mm -hmm. See, but if you're being controlled, that means you're not what? Liberated. Mm -hmm. You see that? Amazing. You're not liberated, right? Now, here we go with that body of Christ versus the flesh itself. Mm -hmm. Would you consider the flesh free, or would you consider Christ's enemy as liberated? You're free according to your spirit, because what does God quicken according to Ephesians 4 we just read? The spirit, the spirit is quickened. Paul says in Philippians 3, put no confidence in the flesh. See, God works three things. He works spirit, soul, and body. Right? It's in that order for a reason. In your Bible, Philippians 2. It's in that order for a reason. The first thing he does is quickens your what? Spirit. So now, that's why his spirit bears witness with your spirit. That's why sometimes you don't even know what to pray for. Romans 8, 26 says, it's the spirit that makes an intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. But you know not what you ought to pray for. Amen. See that? So God works spirit. And now that you have the spirit of the Lord in you, you're liberated. That's why you can go to heaven on and have heaven as a present salvation based on the pretense of the work he already did. Amen. Now your soul, that's why he says rejoice in your soul. Because that's your practical walk, sanctification. But the last thing that God delivers is the, is the body. That's right. So you won't be clear from a sinful nature until you get a resurrected body. That's why the hope of the resurrection is so glorious. Mm -hmm. You see that? 
But you're liberated based on your spirit because God speaks in your spirit. Where people say, oh, God, oh, God, praise the Lord, and run around. That's not God speaking to you. That's flesh. God speaks how? To your spirit through his word. Now, if you want to run and rejoice because we have truth, be my guest. Amen. Right? Amen. Because, because when you, even myself, when I'm preaching the word of God, I get excited about Amen. it. But that's not God, and I, used to, and I used to say this, so that's how I can tell you. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. That ain't no, help me Holy Ghost. No, that's not the, the Holy, we understood what the Holy Ghost's job is to teach you his word. He ain't, you ain't gonna feel it. You see, and most preachers say that. I used to do that when I was in religion. But I understand now through knowledge of what the purpose of the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost isn't here to teach me. God is a spirit, John 4, 24. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, who is that spirit? Christ. We just read it. So now the spirit that's in you is how we worship him, because his spirit bears witness with our spirit, Romans 8, 16. And then it's the truth. His will, 1 uh, Timothy 2 and 4, is that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. That's how we worship him. You don't worship him by running around and that's flesh, crying and oh, that's flesh. Those are emotions. That's not spirit. God deals with a man's spirit. Now, if you want to get emotional based on what you know, then be, that's nothing sinful about that. But most people are, oh, the Holy Ghost touched me, oh, and doing all this. And they, they have an inclination, an inkling of that, that. That's the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost act just like this. Act like what? <laughs> the Holy Ghost is not acting because acting is based off an emotion. The Holy Ghost is a spirit, right? So, 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 so understand that. It's the spirit of the Lord. So if you want to do things, it's based on your liberty. Be fully persuaded in your own mind. If you don't feel that it's wrong and you're not convicted that it's wrong, be my guest. Go to Galatians 2. A couple verses then we'll finish. Galatians 2. I just wanted to give you a release, so to speak, of <laughs> uh, 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 who you are in Christ. And, and, and your, the liberty that you have to be who you are and what you want to do. But I'm also going to tell you with that liberty, use wisdom. Amen. See, because with freedom and the grace message comes what? Responsibility. 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 See, people, see, people think you just preach grace with no boundaries. No, no. There's grace with responsibility. And consequences. And consequences. The consequences are not eternal. You're not going to lose your salvation. But there's consequences. You're going to murder somebody, the consequence may be you might get murdered or you're going to go to jail. That's right. Or you might get the death penalty. That's a consequence of your action. Right? Understand that. Uh, what did I say? Galatians 2. Look at verse, look at verse 4. Look at verse 3. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be what? Circumcised. Because we know today that Abraham and his seed had to be what? Circumcised. That was the covenant they gave him, right? But understand, Paul today, circumcision will profit you nothing. So they compelled Timothy to be circumcised. Uh, uh, Titus, I mean, to be circumcised. But look what he said. And, they, and that because of false brethren, unawares, Brought in who came in privately to spy out our what? Liberty. Which we have in who? Christ, Christ Jesus. That they might bring us into what? Bondage. See, don't allow somebody to say you can't go trick or treating because it's the devil's holiday. Don't allow somebody to spy out your liberty, which is in Christ, to bring you into some kind of bondage. False brother. False brother. Right? Understand that the devil is not going to be out there waiting on you in a red suit. He's in the pulpit. Okay. Jesus, that's right. he, he's preaching to you that the, the, the Halloween is the devil's holiday. If you go out and do it, you're cursing God or whatever they might say. That, that's false brethren. That has nothing to do with the spirit of God. See, they want to control you. Religion controls you by saying you have to meet this standard. You got to pay this much. Don't, that's control. If God says he loves a cheerful giver and, he, and give what's purpose in your heart, how much is that? Only you and God knows. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I haven't read all the 
going through, but I've never seen a percentage in the Bible. What, the, the Bible doesn't speak about percentages. So how do you come up with 10%? Jesus. That's control. Hmm. When, 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 as an appreciation, the, the bishops of churches have a, the, the pre appreciations. And in their appreciation, the clergy are to give a specified amount. How in the world can I appreciate you and you're telling me what to give you? That is control. If I'm appreciating you because of what you've done for me, because I never have never seen him when I was in Rother Church, my appreciation would have been maybe two dollars. <laughs> right? Based on because I should be at liberty to give you based on how I appreciate you. Amen. But the control it's not liberty. Amen, amen. If you don't Jesus. give it, you don't preach at the convocation. Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't get this certain amount, you can't preach. But but go go to Galatians five. And I, I, I'm only want to give you something brief. I don't want to get too deep, but I just want you to understand the liberty you have in Christ. Not to go do what you want, but the liberty to be to understand that all things are expedient, are, are, are lawful to you but it just may not be beneficial. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast. Now, now notice it says stand what? Stand fast, therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us what? Free. See, so if liberty and freedom was the same thing, then it would be the same word. But notice that the liberty is always associated with who? Christ. Right? And because of the liberty we have in Christ, it says hath, H-A-T-H, -A -A -H, which is what? Already, Already hath. Made us what? Free. Free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't put me under some kind of performance. That was Israel's program. You can't do that to me. Put me under the law. Paul said in 1 Timothy 1, the law was not made for a righteous man. When I become saved, I become righteous based on the, right, the, 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 uh, the, the righteousness of Christ being deposited in me. Amen. So now the law is no use to me. That's why I'm not under the law, but I'm under grace. And under grace, I don't have any restrictions other than the responsibility of that God gives me of grace. Jesus. Go with me to Galatians. Uh, we'll drop down to verse 13. So you have liberty to do these things because of Christ. But look at verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto what? Liberty only. You. Listen to this now. If I say, listen, I only want this, that means I want you to give me only that. Mm -hmm. So understand what Paul is saying. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the what? Flesh. But by love, serve one another. So you have liberty to do these things, but don't only. There's the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Don't use it for the flesh. Don't say, well, I'm under grace. I can go out and do woo, I'm going to go ahead and please the flesh. No, no, no. These are instructions under grace. Don't go out and please the flesh. Live, don't live self still to yourself. Live for the one who died to give you this freedom and liberty. Jesus. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 6. Two more passages, then we're done. 1 Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. Look at verse 12. What is the first word? All things. What is the next word? R. All, the, the first two words. All, all, all what? Things. All things. Notice what this says now. All things are what? Lawful unto me. Because I'm saved by grace, do I have the choice to go out and commit a crime? Yes. yes. And I still have that choice. Yes. God does not disconnect us from our flesh once he saves us. He just quickens the what? Spirit. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not what? Expedient, beneficial. It's not expedient for me to be in Christ and go do something and go put, get, be put in jail for. 
That's not expedient. It's lawful for me. I can do it. But it's not, it's not beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. That's liberty. You see that? Because being saved is the freedom from the penalty of sin. But sanctification, how you set yourself apart based on how you study to show yourself approved, is being liberated from the power of sin. You see that? And then the resurrection in the resurrected body is being eradicated or liberated from the presence of sin. See, because the sin is forever with us. Why? Because it's in our flesh. That's why it's such a struggle. If the flesh it was over here and I could walk in the spirit over here, it would be no problem to deny the flesh. But it's, the flesh is what we walk around with every day. That's why it's such a problem. Last one, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23. Second to last. <laughs> this is the last one for real. For real. I got another one. <laughs> well, if somebody else has another one, this is the last one for me. <laughs> I know I normally say that, but I'm for real this time, for real. First <laughs> Corinthians 10, verse 23. First Corinthians 10, verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Now before, he says that all things were lawful for me, but not expedient, and he says I will not be what? Brought into the power of any. Now notice what he says here. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. It edifies not. Right? So you have the liberty to do whatever you want to do. But that comes with responsibility, consequences. If you want to go out and trick or treat with your kids, or even if I love candy, even if you as a grown person want to go out and get candy, use wisdom. Go into the right neighborhood. Right? Don't put yourself in endangerment just because you want to say I'm free. Right? That's, understand now. Right. It's freedom with responsibility. Under, check the candy. Don't just, you know, take everything. And then at the same time, preach the gospel. Amen. Pre it, it's not a crime to go knock on somebody's door, get the candy and say, hey, are you saved? Because I promise I'm doing that this year. Amen. Right? Amen. Are you saved? Because that's an opportunity. And if they don't want to hear it, thank you for the candy. Amen. We'll be on our way. Amen. Right? We'll be on our way. Thank you for the candy, and we'll be on our way. Because that, everybody may not want to hear. <laughs> everybody may not want to hear. Now, if they come to my house, they go here. Because they go, if you want this candy, I'm going to give you this gospel, right? Because you can't knock it at my door, right? So, 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 but, but, <laughs> but, but understand, and if anybody needs some little brochures, I have some, so you can give them out. Right, so so, but but understand that that I, I just wanted you to understand, uh, and I hope that you I hope that you got from this that we have the liberty in Christ to not be put under the yoke of bondage by a man-made holiday. There are satanic things going on on that day. I'm not I'm not denying that, but you don't have to partake in that. You part in partake in the things that edify, right? Any other questions, comments? What, what, which yeah, one are you? Colossians 2 and 16. Colossians 2 and 16. Let's go there. Not, it's not mine now. <laughs> Colossians 2 and 16. This is a good one, though. Now, see, now, now, because he gave one. I ain't going to say no more. Because he gave one, I got to give the context. So I'm going to tell you to go to 8 first. And then we can read 16. So I'm excused. This is not really mine. It's, it's you know. <laughs> Go to Colossians 2 and 8 first. Paul says, Be, we there? Beware lest any man what? Spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the what? Tradition. What is Halloween? Tradition. A tradition of man. After the rudiments of the world and not after who? Christ. Not after Christ. Now, go to verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in, in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, mm -hmm. which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is what? Right. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty. Liberty. Amen. Huh? Amen. Everybody, hopefully you enjoyed yourselves today. Amen. Uh, once again, Amen. thank you all so much for the... Uh,
for the call and the gift. Of, they appreciate us. Amen. And uh, thank you for your giving. And like we always say, uh, we just want to teach. Amen. That's it. We want people to understand the truth of God's word. Uh, and we thank you all for coming. So we appreciate it. And uh, no other comments, questions, observations? All right, God, we thank you now for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. Father God, apart from your son, we can do nothing. But Father God, we thank you right now that we have the liberty, oh God, that we can do all things through Christ, oh God. We, we know how to abound. We know how to be a base. We can do all things through Christ in regards to your word. Father God, we ask right now to just continue to bless us, strengthen us, touch us, oh God, that we may go out and share the gospel, that we may <laughs> take what men meant for bad but use it for good. And we thank you right now. We ask right now to bless each and every person here, bless those who are sick, touch the visitors, touch those who uh, watch by way of video. We thank you for technology. And Father God, we just want you to understand that there's nothing that we can do to be saved for Christ, that, that we can be saved to get to heaven. There's nothing in and of ourselves that we can do other than have faith. It doesn't require a work. It doesn't require to repent, pay a tithe, speak in tongues, or do any of those things. But all it requires is a simple belief in the faith and the shed blood of Christ that he died to pay for our sins. And once we do that, we're saved into the body of Christ eternally. And we thank you for that right now. We thank you for the liberty, and we continue to give your name glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.